All right, so this movie is fine. Like, it's okay, it's nothing special, nothing awful, not a particularly noteworthy thing in anyone's filmography one way or another. Not usually the sort of thing I'd even bother with a whole review of, because, you know, really feels like not my audience, and also I kind of hate writing just fine reviews, because lukewarm is actually a lot more difficult of a tone to convey textually than definitively good or bad, so yeah, this is a perfectly serviceable dog movie, the appeal of which will largely rise and fall based entirely on how much you like dog movies in general, and how demanding you are that movies have more of an aesthetic flourish than, say, your average CBS network procedural, but otherwise it's not very interesting. But the moments surrounding it kind of is, seemingly by accident, so to the degree that it's worth talking about on any level, there's that, yeah. You see, A Dog's Way Home turned it into kind of a meme over the last few months pre-release because despite being sort of a lower budget movie that more or less felt like a less unusual pseudo-sequel to A Dog's Purpose but with the Highlander-esque reincarnation plot switched out for a more conventional, homeward-bound, incredible journey riff, its trailer seemed to be in front of just every movie and said trailer was also an extremely treacly, saccharine, almost self-parody feeling piece of work, seemingly advertising a series of eye-rollingly cliched plot points set to the most generic, inspirational pop music possible, and then to top it all off, it was edited in such a way to suggest that by watching it, you'd just seen the entire film in highlight form, including the ending. So it seemed like everyone has been joking around and teasing about the super sappy dog movie that gives away the ending for months now. Well, everyone, if the majority of your public forum social media engagement is quasi-professional entertainment journalist social media spaces as opposed to the real world, whereas if that isn't your day-to-day -day life, how do you make that happen? Because that sounds so nice. But now that it's out in theaters, it turns out the trailers and that whole marketing campaign were lying? Not in the sense of there being some kind of huge genre bending twist like it's actually a werewolf movie or an alien invasion or something. And yeah, the trailer still gave away the ending in the sense that if you thought there was a chance a movie like this coming out in January was going to have a super sad ending out of the blue, no, of course not. But to an almost absurd degree otherwise, the highlight reel version of the film people think they've seen has been conjured entirely out of whole cloth while simultaneously leaving the film's actual plot, premise, and most of what's noteworthy about it out. Again, not to suggest that there's something groundbreaking going on, but it's kind of strange for any studio to basically set out and make a family-friendly English English language remake of White God and then not tell anyone. But okay, the premise here is that the dog in question is, by the fairly vague breed behavioral definitions and factors that constitute the terms, technically a pit bull mix pup, and A Dog's Way Home isn't simply a singular lost dog story, but a politically tinged narrative that wants to update the dog's eye view of human good and evil for a 21st century moral framework, and also make an explicit argument against a real-world social issue, in this case prejudice against pit bulls as manifested by citywide bans and targeting them for breed-specific euthanization, which I guess is a real thing, including in Denver Colorado where the story starts off. I mean, that's pretty messed up, isn't it? Like, pitbulls don't get to decide whether or not they want to be like that. People do that to them. It's not like there's some dog MMA gym where they go in and like, hey, I need to get all swole and bitey, and the movie calls it racism for dogs, and maybe that's kind of a heavy-handed way of putting it, but also maybe not super inaccurate. I, I mean, look, this, this cutaway thing started off as a bit here, guys, but th this is actually kind of really upsetting to me. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, this actually kind of pisses me off. But yeah, the city government wants to kill off all the pit bulls, apparently, and the dog's owner is this animal rights guy and his girlfriend who are trying to stop this real estate builder from exterminating a colony of feral cats, Jesus, who actually raised the dog, whose name is Bella and speaks with a voiceover by Bryce Dallas Howard. She's the only animal in the movie that talks for some reason. So the evil builder guy uses the corrupt local animal laws to target the dog and force the good guys to move, and through a series of ensuing plot complications, Bella ends up out in the world far from home on her own, first by choice, then by necessity, trying to find her way back and in the process doing what dog do in every movie like this, encountering a wide spectrum of good and bad people, places and situations, and commenting on them in amusingly naive yet profound truisms about life and humanity that the screenwriter imagines the thoughts of a dog would sound like. But now, with a new for the 2020s paint job and polish, where along with our cat rescuing interracial couple heroes and foreclosure vulture real estate cat killer bad guys, Bella's walking tour of the 21st century human experience includes homelessness and military veteran PTSD as scary human problems, handsome upscale gay male couples as beacons of ideological domestic safety versus rugged backwoods guys and selfie shooting trophy hunters as animal abusing villains and a recurring theme of emphasizing the moral righteousness of single motherhood and adoption in both human characters and also Bella having been raised by cats and becoming herself surrogate mother to an orphan cougar cub at one point for an extended B story. None of which I'd stress, however theoretically positive, actually makes A Dog's Way Home a good movie in and of itself. As a whole, it's still a fairly rote film of its type, overly reliant on coincidence and plot contrivance to move the actual story from place to place and all of that. 
but as a kind of document of present history, I did find it somewhat fascinating to take note of these particular details in a film whose tone is aimed squarely at the American middlebrow suburban center and realize, oh wow, so this is where the needle is now, apparently. Beyond that, it's mostly notable for how aggressively it shifts from, you know, movies like this usually put the animals in a bit more immediate danger, don't they? To, oh, there it all is in Act 3, where Bella's suffering turns into an almost comedically escalating series of horrible endurance tests, wherein nearly dying of dehydration because a person holding her chain has dropped dead just out of reach of water is not the worst thing that will happen to her before it's over. It's gets really grim at one point. In any case, more interesting as a commercial culture time capsule than as a movie, but not entirely without merit. Six out of ten.